Um, what have you been up to? Um, I've been actually, I've changed sports in some ways. I've been uh, got a contract with Premier League football. I've been doing a lot of coach education work across uh, the Premier League, some of the northern clubs in the Premier League on the Football League as well. So it's, uh, it's been an interesting few years since I last bumped into you guys. What was it, 2011 or something like that, down up in Lancashire? Yeah, the freezing cold night and the sleet and the rain. Oh yeah, one of the worst nights I've ever experienced for training, but yeah. worked out okay in the end, yeah. How's it going with your application of coaching theory to, to football as opposed to what you've had to deal with with rugby? Yeah, well, coaching's coaching. So in terms of um, methodology, philosophy, man management, etc., new ideas, organisation, etc., Whilst the technical side of the game, the tactical side of the game might be different, they remain relatively the same. So it's, uh, there's some real good crossover ideas from rugby to, or coaching, right across various sports. And how's that work on the other foot? Are you learning stuff from the football code that you're... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never stopped learning. I've got a very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a mind full of curiosity. I, I want to learn, I want to carry on learning. So you pick up bits and pieces from all sorts of areas and um, coaches that uh, you bump into. Are you, are you able to mention who you're working with in, in those leagues? Yeah, well, in, in the Premier League at the moment, I go into Manchester United, Manchester City, um, Everton I've been going into the last four years, Burnley, Newcastle United at the Premier League clubs, and there's one or two other northern-based sort of football league clubs like Blackburn Rovers. The people have heard of Blackburn Rovers, we in Athletic Preston North End, who are quite famous clubs in their own right. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite a number. I've got about 12 to 15 coaches that I mentor on a fairly regular basis. What are your thoughts on the state of the modern game of rugby? How do you see it going at the moment? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been through an interesting period, I think, in the last two years, 18 months. Um, the one or two law changes in the tattle, uh, one or two law changes ball in the air have caused a little bit of consternation, I think, amongst some teams and some coaches. Um, obviously, there's a, the safety aspect of it is now quite uh, predominant. Um, but I'm, what, what's interested me since 2015, when, if you remember, during the Rugby World Cup, we had four Southern Hemisphere sides contesting the semi-finals when a Northern Hemisphere team was hosting the World Cup. That didn't go down too well in the Northern Hemisphere, I don't think. And I've seen since then probably a little bit of a mindset shift amongst some of the Northern Hemisphere sides, not all of them, to play a game that's probably more challenging, there's more ball movement, more play movement than there was before. So that, that's been a good thing. How do you think the players in general, the way that they've been coached in their Northern Hemisphere environment, are they adapting to that new style of play well and, and accepting of the new, the, the new era and thought? I think, I think some of them are, yeah. Um, you know, of the players who've been around a while, who uh, are still locked into their maybe a, a slightly different way of playing, probably find it a little bit more difficult. But hopefully the new players coming through yeah, will have seen what went on in that 2015 World Cup tournament and realise that, you know, if, if you've got, if you can use the whole of the field, if you've got players for the skill set and the physical conditioning set and a game understanding set that allows you to do that, then you're going to be far more of a threat than the team that hasn't. How do you see from Japan 2019 shaping up for, as a competition? I, I, I don't think it's totally up in the air. I think there's probably three or four teams that might contest it. But, you know, as we did in 2007, there's always a team that comes from nowhere um, that might make it through to the later stages. But I think at the moment, you're probably looking at yourselves, New Zealand, um, a slight favourite, so I would imagine. Most people would have put Ireland as setting favourites, but I think you know there's three or four teams there that are going to contest it. It'll be, I think it'll be fairly fiercely contested. But if I were a betting man, and I'm not, um, but if I were a betting man, I'd still put my money on New Zealand to make it a hat trick. Tell us about your involvement here in Ireland. Yeah, m well, Murray got in contact with me around 2009 when I finished with England and asked if I'd be interested in and coming out here. My first visit was in that year. Since then, I've been to the USA, I've been to Argentina, I'm now I'm back here again. I love the environment, I love the work they do, I love the way they approach the game, the integration of the technical side of the game with the game understanding. I'll be working with Dave Ellis this week, who's a fantastic skills coach. I'm more on the game understanding philosophy side, so we integrate really well. And uh, it, it works really well. I think the players get a hell of a lot out of it and, and the coaches that come along do too. Would you recommend that players, if they wanted to get serious about uh, the next level of rugby, this is something they should, they should look at doing? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, because not only do they get um, all the areas of the game covered, 
but also I think it's over the next couple of days, you know, you get some all black legends of the game come in here and do one-on-ones with players and positional skills, etc. I mean, I've never been anywhere else in the world where that happens, you know, and players need to take advantage of things like that because it is a golden, golden opportunity to learn from people who've been right at the top of the game and very successful at the top of the game. And it, it's interesting, I, I remember when I first came here, the, a lot of the talk between play, players, the, old, the older All Black players and the young lads here, wasn't so much about the technical, tactical side of the game, it's about behaviours and how to approach life and how to transfer that approach from life into your approach to the game. So a lot of character stuff, honesty, integrity, desire, passion, determination, dealing with failure, etc. You know, and stuff like that, as I said before, it's just like gold us for young players. It sounds a lot like your template. Yeah, well it is. I mean, I'm, I'm very much a, a coach who, who's, who's player-centred, um, likes to set problems, sessions with problems, decisions for players to answer. I'm a great believer in players taking responsibility, ownership, leadership out on the field. And if they're going to do that, then you have to allow them to do that sort of thing in training. So I look at myself as really, I suppose, of a facilitator, a resource as a coach to help players along, give them opportunities to try things and help them, if things don't go to plan, let them have a go again. Fail fast, learn fast, fix fast is a great saying. And uh, just step in to enhance the performance. Um, I, don't, I don't like to, I used to be a terrible coach for interfering with performance. Things went wrong, I blow the whistle, start again. But a game doesn't work like that. So they need to let them work it through, work it out and see what they come up with at the end. And then if they don't need any help, fantastic. If they do, then it's time to step in and help them. I think you've painted a pretty clear picture that you're a, a think outside the box sort of a coach. Yeah, I've, well, I've always had that reputation, I think, creative or innovative or whatever you want to call it. But I, I do like to think outside the box. And I suppose it stems really from my childhood. Um, I was never satisfied what I was doing. I, as I mentioned before, I had this, this streak of curiosity. I always wondered what other people were doing and why they were doing it and why can't I do that and why can't I do it differently? Why can't I do it better? And that stuck with me in my coaching life. So I'm always looking to do things slightly differently and to push players, push boundaries, break boundaries down, step over the next horizon and create another one and another one and another one. And it's just it's like a never ending journey, really. So if you were talking to a young coach today uh, that was thinking about going down a coaching path, whether it be at club or a more, uh, more of a professional level, was that the sort of advice you'd give them? Yeah, be authentic, be who you are as a coach. You can't be a Jekyll and Hyde character. You can't act one way in real life and then another way as a coach. It doesn't, it doesn't work effectively that. And um, yeah, it's, and, and constantly embrace new ideas. Look around the world for new ideas that you might be able to bring into your coaching. Look at other sports, not just rugby. Look at education leaders. Look what people at the top of the business world are doing sort of embrace that and see how it fits in. What's the future look like for you, Brian, in the next year or two? The future for me? God, well, I'm 72 years old, so I'm not, I'm not sure I've got much of a future left, to be honest. But I'm on three-year contracts for the Premier League football, so that will keep me going for 75. I've no intention of stopping working. I love this sort of environment. I love being challenged. I love to challenge other people. I never stop learning. And I just love mixing with, with young people because I think you just retain that enthusiasm for life. When you see some of the things they do, the way they behave, etc., it just gives you a real lift.